Hey everyone, welcome back to episode two of the Learning Flask series, where we're gonna be learning how to structure our Flask applications properly. Um, in the last episode, we created a single file which contained all of our views. Um, and you know, that worked, but it's not practical. Um, doesn't really give us much room to grow, get our stuff organized, break our application up into sort of logical chunks where we know what's going on. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this episode. So let's jump over to our screen and you can see we're pretty much where we left off last time. I'm going to go ahead and clear that terminal. So we've got a terminal open. We've got our virtual environment active and we've got Visual Studio Code with our app.py file. And if we run Flask Run, you can see uh, we've got our application running over at 127 on port 5000 and if we head to about we get exactly what we set out last time so that's all good so what we're going to do well we're going to create our flask application as a package and that is done in the following so in the terminal we run ls you can see we've just got our app.py we've got a virtual environment and if you ever see this PyCache file, just ignore it. Um, so let's go ahead and create our package. So we're going to create a new directory called app. And I'm going to move into that directory. I'm going to create two new files. init.py and views.py. So we've got our two new files. So what are these? Well, views, if you haven't guessed, is going to contain all of our views. And the init.py file is what's used to actually bring our application together and tell the Python interpreter that this is a package. So what do we do? Let's first start out with our init.py file. So this is actually where we're going to bring in Flask and declare our um, app variable like we did in app.py so let's go ahead and do that from flask import flask app equals flask and we're going to pass it the special name variable we need to add one more line so from app import views so what are we doing here while well, we're importing flask we're creating our flask app and then we're importing this views file underneath, which it might look a bit weird, right? You're probably not used to seeing it like this, but we're doing this to avoid what's called a circular import. Um, it will make more sense once you understand Flask a bit more, but for now, just know that if you wanna import any files from within your package, this is the syntax to use. So from app import the file name. So let's go ahead and add something to views. So let's go back to our original file that create that we created and let's just cut these two views from there and let's dump them into our views.py file. But we need to do one more thing. We need to import app from our init file into the views. So from app import app. So what are we actually doing? Well we're importing from app, which is actually our package that we've created. And because we put this in it.py file, Python's going to treat this directory as a package. So we're, um, we're importing the app variable from the app. And then that allows us to use app like we would just normally by app.root. So that's great. We've got our two roots in views.py we've initialized our app and we've imported those views, but we still need to do one more thing. We need to create our entry point for our Flask app to run. So if we come back to app.py, our original file that we made, we can go ahead and delete this because we've created it in our init file and we don't need to import Flask here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and I'm gonna go and write from app import app so we're importing the app 
object that we created in our init file into app.py. And why don't we go ahead and rename this to run just to make things a little more clear. And so just remember the directory structure, we've got our run.py, which is our entry point, which is in the root of our application project folder. Inside that, we've created our app package, which contains the init.py file and a views file. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to change our environment variables because we've renamed our um, app.py file to run.py. So export flask app equals, am I not in the right directory? No, I'm not. So there we go. Export flask app equals run.py. Uh, we've already set our uh, environment variable for the environment, but let's go ahead and do it again just for clarity's sake. Export flask env equals development. And now we can do flask run. And if we come back to our local host, hit enter, and there we go, we get hello world. We go to about, we get our about page. So how does this help us? Well, you can see that we've separated out our views into their own file, which is nice. Um, but we can do better than that. Let's say we have multiple different types of views. So, you know, you may want to have a file for all of your front end or public views. You may want to have a separate file for your admin views. If you have an admin section on your site, um, you may want to have one for user authorization or logging in or, you know, there's all sorts of cool things we can do with this application structure, which is nice. So let's, uh, let's stop our app. Let's go back into our application package. Let's create a new file called adminviews.py. So you can see we've now got this new file. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy everything that we have in our views file. And I'm going to go and dump that into our admin views file. But of course, we need to change a few things in here for this to work because at the moment we're overwriting what we've got in our views file. So let's change index to admin slash dashboard. And let's change the function name to admin dashboard. And let's do the same with the about. Let's change this to admin profile. Let's change a function name. And let's just retire, uh, change these returns so we know what we're looking at. So admin dashboard. And let's just strip out that HTML and put admin profile. So just to recap, we've made a new file, admin views, dropped in a couple of new routes, and these are gonna be our admin routes. And we've got them nicely separated in two different files, but still, this isn't gonna work just yet. Why? Because we actually need to import it into our init.py file. So from app, import admin views, and that's giving us a nice autocomplete as well. So. There we go, created a new file, dropped in some new views, and imported that file into our init.py file. Now, if we come back into our project directory root and run flask run, head over to our browser window and go to admin slash dashboard, and there we go. We've got ourselves a nice admin dashboard well, that's not really that nice, is it? It's just a line of text, but it will be. It will be. <laughs> and admin profile, beautiful. So there we go. That's how we are separating out our files. We've created a nice uh, project directory structure. Everything's separated out so we know what we're working with. And this can grow indefinitely. I mean, we can have multiple different files in here, all handling different types of views. You know, we could create a API view in here. We can do all sorts of cool stuff, which we're going to do in this series. So 
keep on watching. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you in this episode. Um, what we'll do is also go ahead and come back into our, sorry, I've uh, jumped back a directory. Let me clear that out. Um, if you've never created a requirements.txt file, I'm gonna quickly show you how to do that. So what is a requirements.txt file? Well, I will show you in just a sec. Let's go ahead and make it. So we're gonna use pip. Pip, freeze, a little right arrow. Pip requirements.txt, go ahead and do that. And you can see that creates a new file and that gives us a list of our dependencies for our application. Uh, it's just a nice way to quickly put all of your dependencies in a file and at any point if you do want to install any of these uh, packages from the requirements.txt file you just run pip install dash r for recursive and the file name. Go ahead and run that. Obviously we've got everything installed already but if you do want to use requirements.txt in the future, you can go ahead and do that. So that's pretty much it for this one, and I will catch you in the next episode.